there are many different frequencies of tags and receivers, um, similar how to there are different frequencies for AM or FM radio stations. So the type of frequency that you would choose depends on your research questions, your study species, um, and your focal area. So for example, if you're studying long distance migrations over a long time scale, you might choose a lower frequency. Whereas if you're looking at smaller species and understanding fine scale movements, you might choose a higher frequency. In the Mekong Basin, uh, researchers have commonly used the 69 kilohertz frequency. These are best for tracking long scale fish movements due to their larger size, uh, which means they have a longer battery life, allowing them to be picked up by receivers that are farther away. So this is beneficial in a large area such as the Mekong River, meaning you can have more spread out receivers uh, that can detect fish from up to distances of nearly a kilometer away. It might be easy to assume that the bigger the tag is better, um, but there's a general rule for tagging, and that is not to exceed 2% of the fish's body mass in the weight of the tag. If you're studying smaller species, um, you need to use smaller tags to make sure that you aren't causing stress or mortality to the fish. Most of these tags are surgically implanted in fish, but there are other ways to implant a tag, and that could either be gastrointestinally, so inserting the tag into the fish's stomach, um, or attaching it to the outside of the fish using some sort of harness. Now let's talk about where you would place individual receivers in the river. Generally, you would start by choosing, you know, important junctions you want to look at. So if, say, we want to track fish movements coming into the 3S Basin, so we're going to put more than one receiver in a given location. And when we go to place that individual receiver, mostly that's driven by the bathymetry of the river bottom. That is the shape of the river bottom, because that's going to affect how sound transmits underwater. Generally, we'd look, be looking for a clear line of sight to a fish that we're detecting because, you know, the sound waves, they might be blocked by rocks or, or excessive bubbles underwater, but also distance is a factor. So you want to have a receiver close enough to the fish that you're able to detect it um, because that probability of detection is going to vary with the distance to the receiver. So most receivers are installed in what we would call a gate formation across the river. There's generally a downstream and an upstream receiver that would allow you to detect uh, which direction a fish is moving. So for example, if, if a fish was detected on the downstream receiver first and then on the upstream receiver, we can assume that that fish is migrating upstream. Alternatively, if we detected a fish only on the downstream receiver multiple times, but never on an upstream receiver, uh, we might be able to deduce that that fish is, you know, perhaps holding in a deep pool near that downstream receiver. Looking at the patterns of where fish are detected on each receiver uh, can really give us a lot of clues about how that fish is undergoing its migration. As far as actually anchoring the receivers, well that can be done in a variety of ways. In many locations, people will attach receivers to existing infrastructure such as a bridge pylon. However, you're susceptible to very high fluctuations of flow and very fast velocity water. Other possibilities are attaching receivers to an anchor on the bottom of the river. So they would have um, an anchor on the bottom with some length of cable, attach the receiver to that with a buoy above to make sure it stays in the correct orientation. And that whole setup would then be anchored to shore, allowing you to retrieve that receiver at a later date as each of these receivers will need to be retrieved annually or thereabouts uh, to replace the battery and download data. Because of the very fast water velocities in the Mekong River, if anchoring a receiver to the bottom of the river isn't feasible in a given location, um, or you're worried about high flows or theft, another possibility is suspending that receiver from a raft or some sort of other floating object. This allows the receiver to travel up and down with changes in the water levels, and it can also enlist uh, local villagers or others to sort of keep track of this gear and make sure that none of it is susceptible to theft. There are other more expensive technologies that can help to minimize theft. Um, some of these are an acoustic release, which would allow you to send a signal to the receiver that would then release it and a buoy to the surface to be collected or other newer versions of receivers allow you to download data remotely so that you don't have to pull the receiver every few months to check. Once you've chosen a location to place the receiver in a river, it's important to test what we call the read range of the receiver. That is to tell how far away that receiver can detect a fish. So that's turning the receiver on and then using a specially coded test tag that sends out a continuous signal and placing that in known distances from the receiver. Example, we would go 100 meters away and see if it's detecting, 200 meters and see if it's detecting, 
As we continue on, we can start to tell when that signal becomes weak. And if we plot that data over a curve, we can have a good understanding of what are the detection probabilities at a given distance away from the receiver. This is important to do for all of your locations to really get an understanding of, did a fish pass that particular location or not? And can we be sure, or did we have 100% detection across the river? Of course, all of this sounds good in theory, um, but a place like the Mekong Basin is a very difficult place to anchor receivers, um, mainly due to the incredibly high fluctuations in water levels between the dry season and the rainy season, and the fact that there isn't much infrastructure to attach the receivers to outside of that. All of these systems that we're talking about, anchoring receivers at the bottom of the river, these are all passive monitoring systems. So they're passively waiting for fish to swim by when they track them. With acoustic telemetry, it's possible to actively track fish. So that would be hanging a microphone from a boat, listening for those pings of the fish. Um, this is similar to radio tags or other technology, allowing you to kind of follow a fish as it moves throughout the river. So we talked about some of the technical details of acoustic tags and receivers, and how you might be go about setting up an array in a system such as the Mekong. In our next video, we'll talk about data analysis, so how you can start to answer some relevant research questions with that data.